Hey guys, it's Darwin, and it has been quite some time since I've done a video like this, talking to the camera out here uh, in the middle of nowhere. But it's time to answer some of your questions. All right, now that I am back from my through hike of the Arizona Trail, hiking from Mexico to Utah for about 788 miles and working on a film project, and as soon as I got off that hike, I jumped on a plane and shot over to Scotland for 18 days to take part in the TGO challenge, hiking from coast to coast. I pulled you guys over on the community tab and asked you what you wanted to know about both of those hikes, about the film project, about what I have going on now and what I'm gonna be doing in the future. So let's answer some of your questions. How does hiking in Scotland slash the UK differ to the USA? Well, there's not really a massive difference in environment, at least to me. You know, a lot of people talked about how Scotland would be really magical and real mossy and wet and stuff. I actually had the absolute opposite experience of that, and it was pretty dry and sunny and uh, actually kind of similar to here. Scotland was beautiful. It was amazing, but the environment wasn't really a whole lot different, aside from the fact that we were doing a lot of um, cross-country hiking. So there's not a set trail for the TGO challenge. Basically what the challenge is, is to start on the west coast of Scotland, dip your foot in the Atlantic Ocean, and then hike clear across the country, kind of creating your own route, going high routes, low routes, bushwhacking through farmland and up hills. So there isn't really a trail, but you go to the other side and you end at the North Sea, that is on the East Coast. So that was a big difference. You know, it wasn't a set trail. It was just kind of go out, hike across the country, however you have to do it. And then the other big difference was all of the culture. So even though the hiking was beautiful, uh, the mountains were beautiful, and the environment was beautiful, that was very similar to the US. What really made it different was all the rich history. Scotland is a super old country. So there was a lot of old ruins and castles and obviously just the cultural differences, right? So people, you know, that obviously spoke different, that ate different food, the big cultural experience is really what differed from the USA. But not much of a difference when it comes to environment. How bad were the ticks? How do you check yourself and handle them? So I would assume that you're talking about Scotland and not the Arizona Trail where I don't think there's many ticks at all. But anyways, in Scotland, uh, there were quite a handful of ticks. Actually, on day one, I ended up walking through a tick nest. So the big thing with the hike that we did in Scotland was it was a lot of cross country and bushwhacking. There's not really a set trail. There wasn't one set path that we walked from coast to coast. We were hiking through a lot of tall grass, and I did get quite a handful of ticks on me. I probably peeled a good 30 to 40 ticks off of my legs. Now, I only had a couple that got bedded in, but I did get them all off, and I just made sure that I was checking myself pretty regularly. So I had Lyme's disease back in 2015. So ticks aren't something that I typically take lightly, and I always make sure that I'm constantly checking myself. But uh, yeah, in the beginning, ticks were pretty bad. After the first like four or five days, the ticks kind of went away, but they were pretty bad in the beginning. When camping in Arizona, where do you store your backpack and food at night to prevent rodents from chewing into your pack? So whether it's in Arizona on the Arizona Trail or like out here in Joshua Tree or really anywhere, um, I typically keep my food on the outside of my tent and I keep my pack on the inside of my tent. What I typically do is at the end of the day, after I get done eating, I make sure that I go through my pack, take out any type of wrappers, anything that has a strong food smell, and then put that in my food bag, in a little trash bag, and then I put that right on the outside of my tent. And I just put my pack right next to me, and I don't have a problem. By the way, I don't know if you can hear it, but there is like a fly or a bee or something that is annoying the crap out of me. What do you do if all the tenting areas near a shelter are full and stealth camping is not allowed? Um, keep hiking until you find something? Um, yeah, that would be my guess. Just keep hiking. If, uh, if I am out on a trail, whether it's the Arizona Trail, Scotland, which it was never an issue on either of those trails, uh, I get to a spot that I think that I'm going to be able to camp at and there's no spot for me to camp, I just keep hiking until I find something. 
Was there any issues with getting your gear abroad? Any logistical info you could pass on? No, not really. So whenever I went to Scotland, I did go with a group of other guys. Uh, some of the guys from Z-Pax and then a few guys from here on YouTube that are also hikers that create media. We all brought our pack as a carry-on, but things like stakes, uh, trekking poles, my poop shovel, uh, and my knife, we checked all of that in one bag. So we took a big duffel bag and then all eight of us put all of our stuff in that one bag and then just carried on the rest of our stuff. Now in the past I have flown and I've had to take my stuff and I just mailed it to myself. That was here in the States and I would suggest if you're doing something like that, it's a pretty good option. That way when you land, you can just go to the post office, pick up your box, and then on the return flight, do the exact same thing and send it back home. Do you leave your trail shoes on when crossing rivers and walk them dry? What is your strategy? Yeah, um, whether it's the AT or the PCT or even over in Scotland where we did do a lot of water crossings. So a lot of times while we were hiking in Scotland, uh, we weren't just doing stream crossings, but we were also hiking in bogs. So basically a bunch of mud and moss and grass and just a ton of water. So my feet were wet quite a bit. And it's one of the reasons why I prefer to use a non-waterproof trail runner, just because I know my feet are gonna get wet, I'm gonna be stepping in water. So whether I have a high top boot on or waterproof or whatever, water's just gonna get in my shoe. So I want something that dries out very quickly. So yeah, in answer to your question, when I'm doing a stream crossing, typically about 98% of the time, I just leave my shoes on, I cross the stream, and I let my feet dry as I'm hiking. Curious to know how you found the mix of hiking, making standard video posts for us, and working on the AZT project footage. Was it too much? Mark, it was a ton of work. Um, and I'm not done with the film currently. But yeah, during the Arizona Trail through hike, it was quite a bit of a challenge. You know, not only am I doing a through hike and doing between 20 and 30 miles a day, for, I was out there for 36 days. I was also making YouTube videos, uh, my series on the Arizona Trail. If you guys haven't watched my whole through hike series, I'll put the link down below to all those videos. You can watch my entire hike and a couple behind the scene things for the film. And then I was also shooting footage for the documentary film that I'm working on. And yeah, it was a ton of work, but interesting. It was pretty fun. Now, if you guys noticed, there were a couple weeks where my videos were behind, where I just wasn't able to put out a video. And that's because the editing software on my phone kind of took a crap on me. So that kind of added another challenge to it. So not only was I hiking, shooting uh, YouTube videos, and making a documentary film, but I was also editing all of my YouTube videos from my phone on the trail, which didn't really work out that well. Was it too much? Yeah, probably, but it was fun and I'm glad that I did it. I'm glad I got to share my hike with you guys. I'm glad I got to work on a film and I got to hike a trail that I've been wanting to through hike for quite some time. How will you deal with cold, wet, and windy in Scotland? Better rain gear and warmer clothes? It seems you like to avoid that type of weather in the US. Um, I don't know if I like to avoid that type of weather, but I'd rather not hike in the rain. If you guys watched my through hike of the Pinhoti Trail, last year in 2018 before I did the PCT, it was pretty wet and rainy and nasty all the time. So I will hike and stuff like that. But yeah, I typically like to hang out in the desert. It's just kind of my environment. And as far as how will I deal with wet, cold, windy? Well, I already went to Scotland and I did take a rain jacket and some rain pants. So for the first time in a gear list ever, I actually got rain pants and uh, I didn't really use them at all. Like I said earlier, it was pretty nice weather in Scotland. It was like sunny and in the high 70s every single day. It only rained on us maybe three days in the entire trip that we were out there. So we were actually doing the hike for about 13 days. You have 15 days to do the challenge. We did it in 13. And out of those 13 days, only three days were typical Scotland weather. So I handled it pretty well. And I did plan for rainy, colder weather, but I did a pretty minimal setup with a synthetic thermal jacket, a rain jacket, the rain pants, tights, where I can basically have a layering system. But again, I ended up not really needing it because it was so nice. But uh, yeah, I dealt with it pretty well.
Haven't heard you talk about Snuggles recently. What's been going on? Um, yeah, Snuggles has not been uh, really doing any trips with me lately. We ended up doing the bike tour of the Blue Ridge Parkway last year, and then Snuggles and I have basically just been traveling. And the last two hikes that I went on, the Arizona Trail and Scotland, I did those solo. So while I was out on the Arizona Trail, Snuggles actually headed back to our hometown in Indiana to spend some time with some friends and family and kind of work on her own thing. Running our new website, Outdoor Evolution, and continuing to write and do book reviews. So if you guys want to check out any of Snuggles stuff, I'll put her Instagram account down below. Uh, I'll put the Snuggles Diary, which is her blog that she has over on my website. I'll put that down below too if you want to check out what's going on with her. But after I got back from Scotland, we met back up, and now we are out here traveling yet again and uh, working on stuff together. So that's typically how we do things. There's usually a big chunk of the year where we kind of go off and do our own thing, then we come back together and have the rest of the year to spend with each other. And then we are planning a couple of small trips coming up in the late summer, early fall that we're gonna be doing together, so uh, stay tuned for those. Did you have any haggis? Uh, yeah, and it was so good. I loved haggis. Um, traditional haggis and like haggis fritters. So if you guys aren't familiar with what haggis is, just Google it, I'm not gonna try to explain it here. Uh, in general, it's kind of gross the way it's made and what it is, but it tastes delicious. So yeah, I always try local food no matter where I go and no matter what it is. When will we see a gear list video for your TGO? So I don't know if I'm gonna do a gear list video for my TGO challenge. Uh, I did post my full gear list. It's over on my website. If you guys wanna check that out, I'll put the link down below. But I am gonna be doing a post Arizona Trail and Scotland TGO Challenge gear failures and changes video uh, where I just kind of talk about some of the things that just didn't work out for me gear wise uh, between the Arizona Trail and Scotland and then some of the changes that I made during those hikes. So keep an eye out for that video, but I don't think that I'm gonna do a full gear list video for the TGO, sorry, but you can go check that list out. Again, I'll put it down below. Would you hike the CDT to get your triple crown? No. Uh, and that's the thing. I don't want to hike the CDT just because of the reason of getting the triple crown. Because it's not really important to me. Labels are not important to me. So my heart's just not in the CDT right now. You know, the reason I do hikes is because I have some passion for it. And my heart is in it. And I have a certain reason for it. I do... Every hike that I do, I do it for a different reason. So this year, instead of doing what you guys probably thought I was gonna do, which was the CDT, I decided to go out and do something completely different, not a typical through hike, and that was the Arizona Trail. Not only doing the through hike and shooting my YouTube videos, but also shooting a film. And that means so much more to me than some label of uh, being a triple crowner. So I'm not saying that I'm not going to hike it, but I don't want to hike it just because I want to get a triple crown. I want to hike it because I want to hike it. I want to have some sort of passion and drive to hike that trail aside from just a label. So maybe one of these days, but for right now, no, I will not hike the CDT for my triple crown. Sorry. Any chance you could say couscous one more time, please? Goes. Do you have a release date for the AZT documentary? Also, how will we be able to watch it? So no, I do not have a release date for the AZT documentary because it's not done yet. Not only did I do the through hike, I filmed before the through hike, I filmed after the through hike, but I will still be doing pickup shots and certain interviews and some stuff I didn't get a chance to film from now till probably the end of September. So, you know, I got to film some northbound hikers and the trail in those seasons, but I really wanna be able to get some of the southbound hikers and the trail in some other seasons, which isn't until uh, about mid-September to early October, so I still have quite a bit of filming to do. You know, as I said months ago, this is totally different than just making a YouTube video or a YouTube documentary. I'm not just taking all of my through hike videos and smashing them into one video and putting a, that out and calling it a documentary, I'm making a legit film. So it is still going to take quite a bit of work, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm not promising, but hoping to have something done by the end of the year, if not beginning of next year. 
And as far as how you'll be able to watch it, the plan is to release it on iTunes and Amazon and possibly put a DVD out of it. I don't know if that's gonna happen because so many people watch digital media and don't really own disc anymore, but I'll let all you guys know when the time comes, but for now, I'm still working on it. Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? Yes. All right, guys, last question for this q and I'm sure a break is coming, but what's next for Darwin? So yeah, I actually did get done taking a big break. If you guys noticed, I did the Arizona Trail. I went to Scotland and my Arizona Trail videos were still coming out until last week and I didn't put a video out last week. So I structured that in a way to where I could kind of take a break from making a couple YouTube videos. But now that I'm done taking that break, I'm back um, to make videos at least. Now, as far as what I have planned for next, uh, we are currently in Joshua Tree visiting some friends yet again, like I do a couple times a year, and we are heading back to Arizona to continue working on the film. Now, aside from working on the film, rehiking sections of the Arizona Trail for the next couple months, I have a couple small trips planned and a couple small hikes planned. And aside from that, I'm probably gonna also be wrapping in another bike tour or bike packing trip this year. I will also be going yet again out to PCT Days and Cascade Locks in August to take part in the celebration of PCT Days and going to Arizona Trail Days in September in Flagstaff. So if you guys wanna come out, hang out, talk about gear, have a beer, um, pick my brain, I can pick your brain. I will be at those two trail events. That's the PCT days in August, Arizona Trail Days in September, and then I'm gonna be doing a small through hike of the Timberline Trail, which goes around Mount Hood a few days before PCT days. If you wanna hear a little bit more in depth of what I have going on for this year, what I've been doing, what I'm gonna be doing, I recently did a podcast episode of Summit Fever. If you guys wanna check that episode out, it's about an hour and a half of me just talking about what I have going on, what I've had going on, and what I will have going on, uh, I'll leave the link to that podcast down below. You can either listen to it on all the podcast streaming services, or you can actually watch it here on YouTube in a full video format. Now that I'm back, strap in for a bunch of new videos, gear reviews, a couple of uh, advice videos, and I will also be putting out my videos from my Scotland TGO challenge. If you found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and as always guys, thanks for watching.